Good evening, everybody. Friday, no, uh, October 30th. I was going to say November, but we're almost in November. Amen. Welcome to Friday Night Firestarter Bible Study here in Baldwin Park, Ledford Street. Amen. Uh, uh, my apologies. Well, my apologies. Last Friday, we did live stream. Um, I was up north visiting family uh, for my mom's birthday. But praise the Lord, we're back. Everything went good. Thank you for those that prayed for traveling mercies for us that went up. Amen. And uh, But you have plenty of people to tune into. You can't say that you could have been in a Bible study when there's like 10 of them going on. Amen. Um, a lot of things happening. I mean, don't forget to vote, first of all. Don't forget to vote. I mean, uh, uh I cast him. I, I voted like maybe two weeks ago. My wife's gonna do her thing on tomorrow. tomorrow. And uh, but don't forget to vote. Your vote, your vote is gonna count. Amen. And maybe you never voted before, or you just didn't care, or whatever. Well, look what's going on around you. You need to care. Can someone say amen? Amen. And uh, but yeah, vote. Amen. I'm not gonna tell you who I voted for or. For for uh, for you to vote for, but just search your heart, Amen. Search your heart, and search for the one that has the godly principles and not the worldly principles, Amen. Because that's what we need right now. We need God in the land. The Bible tells us in Second Corinthians seven fourteen, if my people will humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Notice how there's a three part there. God gives us three parts that we need to do. What's the first one? Humble. What's the first one? Seek. And what's the last one? Repent. And he will heal our land. Amen. Those are three things that we need to do. But those three things we need to do every day. Every day. We need to humble ourselves. Amen. Sometimes we need to shut our mouths. Amen. Instead of talking, listen. Amen. We are to seek His face. How do we seek His face? We seek it by prayer, by His word. That's how we seek His face. And the most important is repent. Turn from our wicked ways. Amen? That's the only way. Amen? Because if you still, if you're, you can humble yourself, you can seek His face, but if you're still out there living foul, guess what? He's not going to hear your prayers. Amen? Or my prayers. So, you know, we have to be, get right and be right. Amen. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow morning is prayer. Amen. Prayer at 8 a.m. Amen. 8 a.m. prayer uh, for one hour. Amen. One hour. Amen. And for whatever reason, you can't make it, you got to work, or whatever, whatever the case may be, pray at home, please. Pray at home. Amen. Uh, God hears the prayers of the righteousness. Amen. Uh, don't forget Sunday morning church service starts at 9 a.m. And then uh, the word starts at 9.30. So, uh, and don't forget to change your clocks. Amen. Change your clocks. Amen. We, uh, we go back an hour, right, babe? We yes. go back an hour. So you get Fall an back. extra hour of sleep. Amen. But still, mm -hmm. set your clocks. Amen. I shouldn't tell you so you can show up to church at 8. Amen. You could be early. Amen. I shouldn't have said anything. That's why you're there at 8. Amen. But nowadays, everything is changed automatically. Amen. Your phones and your whatever, uh, iPads, iPods, or whatever. I don't know. Something like And uh, they change automatically. So uh, just make sure you set your alarm. Amen. And there should be no excuse not to be at church. Amen. Uh, don't forget to continue being faithful in your giving. In your pledges, amen, of, uh, in your offerings, your tithing, uh, whatever, you know, in your mission giving, continue being faithful, amen. Um, and as, you know, as we know that we're coming into November, amen, we're coming into November, we just, uh, you know, that's it, amen, that's it, we're, we're there, amen, we just have a... Uh, Thanksgiving, and then we got the fat man in the red suit, and then we're done. Amen? We're done. Amen? Um, of course, we all know what tomorrow is. Tomorrow, people, you know, Halloween, they dress up as, I don't know, they dress up. Amen? 
The only good thing that I've heard, the only good thing that I've heard tomorrow about tomorrow is uh, that they're not going to allow any parties, any uh, gatherings uh, like they usually do outside, big parties, gatherings, or anything like that. Amen. A lot of cities are outlawing trick or treating. Amen. A lot of cities, you're not going to be able to trick or treat in that. Amen. You, uh, you know, they're just not going to allow it. Amen. I don't know about they're going to allow it here in Baldwin Park. Uh, they're supposed to be having something at the at the city hall. Oh, they're supposed to be having something at the city hall in Baldwin Park. Amen. So I'm pretty sure if you go online, those of you that live here in this city, you can go online and you could, you know, have some information there as far as the city of Baldwin Park. Amen. Uh, you know. My wife and I, you know, we don't celebrate it. It's not a holiday. It's not something to celebrate. Amen. It's, uh, you know, it's it's a demonic, it's a demonic uh, thing. Amen. It goes all the way back to the 1800s, 1800s, where uh, it came out of England. Amen. Where they would, where the Gnostics would worship the dead. Amen. That's where they came out with the Dia de los Muertos too. Amen. So do your history. Do your, do, you know, research it. You'll be surprised what you find. Amen. Uh, but whatever you do, be safe. Be safe out there. Please don't dress up your kids as little demons. All right? Just don't. Amen. Dress them up as Moses or something. Amen. It was like, what was it? Last, that, was it last year, babe, that Halloween mm -hmm. fell on church night, Wednesday? Amen. And... Usually on Wednesdays in our kids' department, we would have like 60 kids, 40 to 60 kids. Well, that night there was only like maybe 10. Amen. Where were they? They were trick-or-treating. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. But just be safe out there and, uh, and uh, just, you know, just be safe. A lot of things going on out there. A lot of people uh, hit and run, doing hit and runs right now. Uh, I just I heard on the news on the way to work today that that there is this lady that did a hit and run in Whittier and uh, she took off and uh, the, 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 the man died the man died so now she has a vehicle manslaughter on her well they traced her to Idaho then they traced her to China and then they traced her to Australia and they arrested her in Australia and extradited her back, amen, after, after all these years. And uh, so, hey, you know, you're going to reap what you sow, no matter what you do. You're going to reap what you sow, amen. Uh, prayers. We have a lot of, we have some special prayer needs tonight, amen, which we're going to lift up, amen. If you have a need, or you know someone that has a need, amen, just uh, shoot us to... Uh, through Facebook there, and my wife will write it down, and we'll we'll pray, Amen. But first of all, we, we need to lift up Grandpa George, Brother George, Amen. Um, those of you that know George, Amen. He's a Vietnam vet. He's a brother of the Lord. He loves motorcycles, Amen. And he's a faithful man of God. But he needs prayer, Amen. He needs prayer. Um, so we need to lift him up. We need to lift his family up, his children. Amen, and, uh, and we need a, a, a miracle in George's life. Also, Sister Raylene, we need a miracle, continued miracle for her. We got a phrase report that the medication that she's on now is is working. Amen. So she still needs a miracle. Amen. So we need to lift her up also. Amen. Uh, any, what other need do we need? Um, gosh, I can't think on top of my head. Robbie, he's already down with his chemo, but we still need to pray for brother him. Robbie from, uh, brother Robbie from uh, C4 uh, Connection Church in Amarada, amen. He, he rang the bell, amen. He's done with his chemo, but he still has a long road to recovery, amen. We got, this, we got to see Robbie a couple weeks ago, looking good, serving the Lord, still on the worship team, amen. And uh, so we need to continue praying for Robbie, amen. And... Um, Anyone else that comes to our minds, we'll, we'll lift them up at the end. Glory to God. Amen. But uh, don't forget, don't forget, um, just continue being faithful. Amen. Um, those of you that for some reason haven't come back to church, it's time to come back. Amen. 
you know, it's, it's time to come back. Come back to your personality. Amen. And uh, this, you know, the Yorona virus ain't gonna, you know, ain't gonna go nowhere. Come on. But where are you gonna go? Amen. So uh, just continue fighting the good fight of faith. That's all I really have to say on that issue. Amen. So before we get started, just go in prayer. Just lift up those names. Amen. We'll bless the word tonight. Amen. And then we're to see where the Holy Spirit leads us. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight, Father God. We just give you all the praise, all the glory, Father God, for you are worthy of all things, Father God. Father God, as we lift up the names mentioned, Father God, Brother George, Sister Raylene, Robbie, Father God, we continue praying, Father God, for this healing in their bodies, Lord God. We pray for deliverance. We pray for restor uh, restoration, Father God. Father God, we just pray that your will will be done in their lives, Father God. Strengthen their bones physically. But most of all, strengthen them spiritually, Father God. We lift up marriages tonight, Father God. We pray for homes. We pray for marriages. We pray for that rebellious child, Father God, that doesn't take no for an answer, Father God. That, Father God, all they want to do is hear yes, 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 but they don't understand no, and they get rebellious. We pray for that rebellious child, Father God. We come against that spirit of rebellion, Father God. Father God, we pray, Father God, for all those sick in body, Father God. We we pray for people's finances, Father God. We pray for those that are searching for jobs right now, Father God. We pray, Father God, for those that are just tired of being tired, Lord God. And they just need an answer. And the only way they can get an answer, Father God, is through you, Father God. So we just pray that they search you. Like I said earlier, that they seek your face, Father God. Father God, so tonight, Father God, just bless this word tonight, Father God. Let your way, Father God, be your way and not our way, Lord God. Let us all decrease so you may increase. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, amen. amen and amen. Glory to God, amen. Well, before we get into the message, I just want to share something I was reading this morning, amen. And it's a familiar portion of scripture, amen. We've all read it. We all, some of us got it, we got it on our walls, amen. But there's something that I want, really want to point out, amen, and then we'll go into what, what, what I have tonight, amen, in Joshua chapter 24, amen, uh, 14 and 15, amen, but before I get there, we need to kind of backtrack here, God is reminding the children of Israel where he brought them from, amen, and sometimes we need to remember where God brought us from, can I get an amen on that, amen, you know, we need to remember, amen, we weren't all goody-two-shoes our whole life, amen. We've all come from different backgrounds, or whatever the case may be, amen. Uh, we, weren't saved, we weren't saved all our lives. And if we were, somewhere along the line, we could have went left, we could have went right, we could have backslid. But, you know, whatever the case may be, God was reminding the children of Israel where he's brought them from. He was reminding them about the Red Sea. He was reminding them about... The, the man on the wilderness. He was reminding about the water. He was reminding about everything. But now he gets to a point, amen, where he's telling the children of Israel, now it's your turn. It's your turn to tell, tell me what you're going to do. And this is, where it, this is where it gets good right here in 14 and 15. Now, now he tells us, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. God is telling the children of Israel, and He's telling us, now fear the Lord and serve Him with all faithfulness. Not half-stepping, not when you want to, not just on Sundays, not just on Wednesdays. With all faithfulness, throw away the gods of your forefathers, worship, that, that your forefathers worship you on the river in Egypt, and serve the Lord. In other words, forget the past. Forget what your family did to you. Forget what that person did to you. What people treated you or talked about you. Whatever the case may be. Throw away all that stuff. Now watch what he says in verse 15. But if. But if. Remember that word if is a conditional word. Amen. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you. Then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your forefathers served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. 
But at the beginning of verse 15, he tells us, But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose. Then choose. He gives us a choice. We're not robots. That's why we have a free will. God gives us a choice. Are we going to serve the Lord or we're not going to serve the Lord? Amen. It's just like saying, I'm going to go to church today or I'm not going to go to church today. I'm going to go to Bible study or I'm not going to go to Bible study. We have a choice. God is saying, if serving the Lord seems undesirable, in other words, you have no passion. You don't want to really serve the Lord. Amen. You might be going to church because your wife goes to church and you just don't want to hear, hear her name or vice versa. Amen. You know, whatever the case may be, if it's undesirable, undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day. If you don't want to serve the Lord, then don't. Then don't. Amen. Then don't. You're going to find yourself in the worst place uh, playing, playing Mickey Mouse with God than, you know, than if you were serving Him faithfully. And if you're going to and if you're going to serve the Lord, look what it says. You know, whether the gods of your forefathers served beyond the rivers or the gods of the Amorites, you cannot serve the Lord and serve men. Amen? You not can't serve the Lord on Sunday and then be playing fufu on Monday. You can't. You can't. Amen? You can't. Amen? But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And that's what it and that's what it comes down to. Amen. My wife and I, we made a vow years ago, Amen, that our house is dedicated to the Lord. Yes, amen. Everything we do, you know, God is in control of our home. Amen. God blesses our home. Amen. God blesses us with jobs to, to pay the bills. Amen. Every month when we pay our bills, Amen. What's the, what, what do we say, babe? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This got paid. Thank you, Jesus. That got paid. Amen? Because we didn't pay it. God gave us our jobs. You know, God gave us our paychecks. Amen? And we turn around and give thanks to the Lord. Amen? But tonight, I just want to just, you know, make it clear. Amen? During these times that we're in right now. Amen? During these times, that's crucial. Amen? You know, if it's undesirable to you to serve God, then don't. Then don't. Believe me. The world will take you back. The devil will take you back. Amen? But as for me and my house, and that's what should, that should be coming out of your mouth. We will serve the Lord. Amen? And then in verse 16, then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other people. God's. Amen. God gave them a choice. They responded and say, no, we're going to serve you. And with that, amen, I want us to turn to our Bibles, amen, to, uh, let me get it here, amen, to the book of Mark. To the book of Mark, and we're going to be reading in... Chapter. Where to go? Where to go? Mm, give me a second here. chapter 2. And we're going to be reading through uh, 1 through 12. Mark chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. And before we get, before we open up there, you know, we are now entering, how many months now we've we been in this thing? Eight months. We're almost a year. Amen. We're now, we're now been eight months that our lives have been turned upside down. Amen? 
We are still, righteously, we are still under the stay-at-home orders, but how many are truly paying attention to those orders? Amen? You know, everybody's out doing their thing. They're out and about. Tomorrow they're going to be out, you know, getting candy. They're going to be doing this. They're going to be doing that. Amen? I mean, you know, so no one's really paying attention to them no more. Amen? People are still taking it serious as far as social distancing and mask and all that. But as far as everything else, it's kind of starting to play out. Amen? And with more places opening up, people are out and about enjoying themselves and getting out of the house. Amen? You know, everybody has their own opinion on what to do or not to do. Amen? And, and really, you know, our opinion really doesn't matter. Amen? What matters is, you know, what's going to save lives in the future. Amen? But I truly, I truly believe... I truly believe that that uh, what we've been doing, what we've been doing at home during this time, really it's gonna really has tested us as far as our walk with God. Amen. And I mean, in February, before all this started, in February, our church was on the verge of a revival. Amen. I mean, it was. It was really, I mean, new faces were coming in, uh, people from the old were coming in, and uh, it was just, uh, it was just great. But all of a sudden in March, when the epidemic hit, amen, everything just got turned upside down, amen. And unfortunately, a lot of people backslid, a lot of people um, uh, just went astray, amen. And now that the church is open, those people are no longer around, amen? And I believe, you know, that what we've been doing at home during this time is going to reveal who we really are, amen? Especially for the Christian believer. I mean, are we spending the day, are we spending our time playing video games, surfing the internet, social media, watching TV, Netflix, YouTube, amen? Staying up all night and sleeping all day like a tweaker? Are we doing that, amen? Or are we spending time together? Are you know? Are we, you know, are we putting away our phones and actually talking to each other? Amen. Building games, uh, building projects. You know, talking about our future. Amen. And I know I don't look it. Amen. But I'll be turning sixty in a week and a half. Yep. I'll be turning sixty years old. Amen. And uh, it's like, you know. I ain't got much time left, amen? I'm, my, my tank's already three quarters empty, amen? I only got a quarter of tank left, amen? So, you know, we've been talking about our future. We've been talking about are we going to continue living in Baldwin Park or maybe spread our wings to another state or, or, or whatever the case may be, whatever God's will is in our lives, amen? You know, uh, we're talking about life insurances, we are just talking about that a little while ago. Life insurance. Amen? Uh, so it's like, you know, things that we should have did a while back. Now, you know, when I say, man, you know, 60 years old. That's cool. Sure. Uh, that's it. Yeah. You know? That's it. When you start getting that mail from ARP, in the, you know, <laughs> then you know you're done. You know, that's it. You're done. You, you know, they're ready, you know, sending you brochures of Forest Lawn. Amen? <laughs> Yeah. During this time, during this time that we're in, in these last eight months, amen, we should be so in tune with God, we have no excuse. We have no excuse to say that we don't have time to read, we don't have time to pray, we don't have time to have Bible study with, with, our, with our, our children at home or with our wives or whatever the case may be. You know, even if you're still working, you still have plenty of time. You know, we, can, we, can, we still can't really go anywhere, amen? And if you really look at it, the places that we do go, amen, we're only limited. We're lo only limited, amen? So my question to you tonight is, what is, what is your excuse? What is your excuse? Amen? The you know, like I read earlier in Joshua twenty four fifteen. you know, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
But the only way you and your house can serve the Lord is that if the Lord is actually in your house. Amen? Let me say it another way. As long as Jesus is in your home, then you and your house can serve the Lord. But if not, that sign that's on the wall doesn't mean anything. Amen? So if you, you know, by now you should have gotten to Mark chapter 2. Amen? And in verses 1 through 5, the word of the Lord says this. And again he entered, and again he entered, Jesus entered Capernaum after some days. And it was heard that he, Jesus, was in the house. How many of you want Jesus in your house? Amen. Immediately many gathered together so that there was no room to receive them. You see, when Jesus is in your house, people know that the Holy Spirit is in your house. Amen? You ever, you ever go to someone's house and as soon as you walk in, you're like, ooh, you know, you don't, it's like something spooky. Amen? You just can't wait to get out of there. Amen? But then you walk into some, some other person's house and you're like, feels good in here. Peace of God. Amen. There's, I feel peace in here. Amen. It doesn't smell like weed. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Immediately many gathered together so that there was no room to receive them. Not even near the door. And he preached the word to them. <clears throat> then they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they knew, could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let him down the bed and on which the paralytic was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the, he said to the man, Son, your, sons, your, your sins are forgiven. Amen. So my other question to you tonight is, is Jesus in your house? Amen. Is Jesus in your house? Amen. And like I said earlier, when Jesus is in some, your house, amen, people people will call you for prayer. People will ask if they can come over. People will ask, hey, you know what? You know, can 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 I come and spend the night? Amen. They'll find any excuse just to come over because they feel a peace in your house. Amen. People have, you know, people have said about this about our home, amen. They come over, amen, and they don't want to leave, amen. And I'm cool with that, amen. They feel the peace in our home, amen. It's not because the candles smell good or, or the, my wife's cooking's good or anything like that, amen. It's because they just feel peace, amen. Our kids come over. My son crashes out on the couch, amen. And my granddaughter goes in her room and does her thing, amen. And... They just feel a peace. And that's what I, that's what it means when, you know, for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. It's because Jesus is in our house. Amen. My name is not Jesus. My wife is not Jesus. Amen. My name is not Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Jesus Cristo. Amen. No, but the Holy Spirit dwells in our house. Amen. Amen. There is no compromising in this house. Amen. That's one thing. That's one thing that happens. Amen. And meet a lot of people's homes. Amen. Is that there's compromising. Amen. There's you know well. It's okay if I do a little bit of this or I'll, I'll do a little bit of that. Amen. No. Amen. We don't serve a compromising God. That's why God said that His promises are what? Yes, yes amen. and amen. You know. Yes and amen. There's no. There's no in-between. There's no maybe. Amen? You know, there's, t there's, there's times that I feel bad for my wife. Amen? You know, there's times that, you know, she wants to have things here with the family, with her brothers and her sisters and her family. Amen? You know, uh, we got Thanksgiving coming up. And it surprised me. It literally surprised me when you told me that they were going to come for Thanksgiving. Amen? Because, you know, uh, you know, they like to, you know, they like to have their wine and whatever, amen. But they know there's no drinking in my house. They know, no, 
Amen. There's no drinking in my house. Amen. And a lot of them in the past. Amen. You know, my wife's six in the morning. She's cooking. She's baking. She's the turkey and sending me the food for less every five minutes. She's doing whatever, you know. And then, you know, to find out they're not coming. Why? Because they know that they can't drink here. Amen. It is cool. It is cool. Amen. And if it's just her and I, amen, it's cool. We'll yeah. pack it up and we'll just go find the homeless. Amen. And feed the homeless. Right, babe? Come on. You know? In our text, we had read that once again, Jesus entered Capernaum. In chapter 1 of Mark, Jesus started his ministry in Galilee. It is there by the sea he called his first disciples, Sandrew, I mean Simon, Andrew, John, and James. Amen. Then from Galilee, he went to Capernaum. It was there that Jesus started to preach and heal. Jesus preached the word of what? What was Jesus' first ministry? It was repentance. Oh yeah, repentance. It was repentance. Amen. He casted out unclean spirits. He healed Simon's mother-in-law. He healed the sick. <clears throat> he cleansed the leper. Amen. In, 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 uh, in Mark 44 and 45 of chapter 1, uh, after Jesus healed the leper, he told them not to say anything to anyone and go show yourself to the priest. However, the man was so excited that he was healed, he did the opposite. And that's how it should be told for us daily. When was the last time you told somebody, amen, what Jesus had done in, has done in your life? Amen? When was the last time that you shared your testimony with someone? When was the last time you shared the gospel with someone? Amen? And especially during these times where people are looking for answers, looking for hope, looking for just something, amen? That's when we should be at our most, you know, at our most, amen? <clears throat> the leper went and told everyone that Jesus healed them, and many people came, came, and it got to a point that Jesus had to leave the city and go to a deserted place. So in chapter 2, we see Jesus returning back to Capernaum after some days. And everyone heard that he was in the house. Someone say, in the house. In the house. In the house. And immediately met many gathered together, so there was no more room to sit or stand, not even by the door. And Jesus preached the word to them. Amen. You see, beloved, when Jesus dwells in your house, it will do two things. It will draw people to your home. Or it will keep people from your home. Amen. It will do two things. It will draw people to your home. Or it will keep people away from your home. Why, do they, why does it keep people away from your home? Because they... Conviction. Conviction. Amen. And then, as, and then in verse 2 and 4, as we read earlier, amen, we see a group of men bringing their friend who was bedridden. He could not walk on his own. But when they got there, there were so many people, they couldn't get in. So they were able to get on the roof and somehow lifted the, their friend up. They broke a hole in the roof and lowered their friend down on his bed right where Jesus was at. You see, beloved... The only way they were able to get to Jesus was making a hole in the roof. The home was an obstacle that they needed to break through it. Like many of us today, we have obstacles in our lives. Or am I the only one? Amen? That we need to tear down. We need to remove and we need to break through. And until we tear down, remove, and break through, we cannot get close to Jesus like we need to. Amen? We need to remove those obstacles, those walls, amen? It's just like the wall of Jericho, amen? Walk around your obstacles seven times and watch how the Lord will break that down, amen? 2 Samuel 5.20 tells us that God is the master of breakthroughs, amen? And for many people out there, the obstacle in their lives is sin. And for a lot of you, there are many obstacles. There's a lot of sin you're dealing with. And until you remove those obstacles in your lives, your home will be in chaos. I know. I've been there. We've been there. Amen? 
Jesus will not dwell in your house that is full of sin. He won't. Amen? The Holy Spirit will not dwell in a house that's full of sin or full of compromising. Amen? You want, you, you want to know, do you really want to know where sin comes from? How sin, how sin gets into your home? It all starts with compromising. You allow a little of this, you allow a little of that, and I can guarantee you, your house will fall. Amen? And I'm talking to Christians. I'm talking to those that say you're born again. Amen? Jesus said in Matthew 7, 24-27, Build your house on a solid rock. The rain came down, and the floods came, and the rain blew, and beat on the house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Who's the rock? Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Build your house on Jesus. Amen. That's the solid foundation. Amen. Matthew 12, 25 tells us, A house divided shall not what? Stand. A house divided will not stand. What? Let's, let, let's, take, let's take Achan. Let's take Achan, for example. Amen. And the mistake he made. For a, lot of, for a lot of people say, well, it wasn't that bad. But really, check into it. Watch. In the book of Joshua, chapter 6, amen, we read the great miracle, amen, of the walls of Jericho that fell down, you know, and Joshua's fame spread out through the land. And in chapter 7, Israel was going to go attack the people of Ai. Israel was a force in the land, and much greater and larger than the people of Ai. However, something happened, and when they went to attack I, Israel was defeated. This shouldn't have happened. And when Joshua asked God, why God? God replied saying, Israel has sinned, and they have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have taken some of the accursed things, and have stolen and deceived and they have also put it among their own stuff. God told Joshua, get up and sanctify the people because there is an accursed thing in your midst. And you cannot stand before your enemies until you take away that accursed thing from you. That accursed thing meaning sin. Later in chapter 7, Joshua confronted Achan and asked him to come clean. Why why, Achan, why did you do what you did? Achan confessed. Watch this. Achan confessed that he had sinned against the Lord and took stuff that he shouldn't have and brought them into his own tent, his own house, and hit them in the ground. So Joshua sent leaders to Achan's tent, dug it up, and found it all. So because of Achan's sin, they stoned him. And I'm not talking about this kind of stone. I'm talking about rock stones. They stoned him and his entire family and burnt them in fire. Amen? Keep bringing or keep allowing sin into your home, beloved, and, geez, how, and, and, and see how it affects not just you, but your family. Amen? You know, I remember back in the days, I couldn't hide nothing from my wife. I would have my little stash here and my little stash there. And she would find it all the time. Amen? I'd be like, man, you know, it's the cameras? There's cameras or what? Amen? Discernment. Yeah. You know? It was like, yeah, she would say that word. I got discernment. I got discernment. God gives me discernment. I'd be like, man, forget your discernment. Amen? <laughs> you know? But she would not allow sin in the house. Amen? You know? And it would cause chaos. It would cause division. Amen. But I thank God. God delivered me from all that stuff. Amen. And all that, all that stuff. And praise the Lord. Amen. Back in our main text in Mark chapter 2. Jesus told the paralytic man. Arise. Take up your bed. And go to your house. Why did Jesus tell him to go to his own house? Remember. It was sin that had this man bound. It was sin that this man couldn't walk. Amen? It was sin, amen, that this man couldn't stand on his own two feet. Amen? And this man being full of sin means his house was full of sin. 
And now that he was set free and healed, Jesus told him to go back to his own house. So now his home can be set free. However, when your house is built on the rock and Jesus is in the house, there is peace there. Miracles happen. Healing happens. Forgiveness happens. Grace and mercy happens. And salvation happens. We cannot forget, beloved, that Jesus is a way maker. He's a miracle worker. He's a promise keeper. And he's a light in a dark place. Amen. Jesus touches every heart. He heals every heart. He mends every heart. He turns lives around. That is who he is. But we need to be ready for that. We need to allow Jesus, amen, into our lives. Sooner or later, beloved, all this that we're going through is going to pass. Will it ever get back to normal? Probably not. But it'll pass, amen. But my question to you, when it does, amen, where are you going to be? Where are you going to be? Amen. Are you still going to allow Jesus in your home? Or is this going to be something that you just went through and you just went another way? Amen. So that's the question tonight. Amen. That's the question tonight. Amen. What excuse do you have? And is Jesus in your house? Amen. And you need to ask yourself that question. Amen. What's your excuse? Of keeping you from serving God faithfully? What's your excuse for not humbling yourself? What's your excuse for not turning from your wicked ways? And what's your excuse from serving God totally faithfully? Amen? That's a question that only you can answer. Amen? I know I answered that call a long time ago. My wife answered it. Amen? And even though we've hit bumps and rolls and we've gone through stuff, amen, we have a testimony as far as our marriage goes, amen. You know, uh, but we never took, even though we were going through the wilderness, we never took our eyes off God. Even when I didn't want to serve God anymore, amen, the Holy Spirit kept, kept drawing me back, kept drawing me back, and I kept fighting and fighting and fighting, amen. But the Bible says that was in your, that's what's in God's hand. No one can take away. Amen. And I'm glad he had me in, in his hand this whole time. Amen. And we're going on 18 years now. We're going on 18 years now. Amen. Because of a short and, leash. You know. <laughs> and God's been faithful. God's been faithful. Amen. God's been faithful. And you know, before, you know, my wife and I prayer, she'll be in one room praying that I would get hit by a truck and I'll be in the other room. Lord, strike her with an aneurysm or something. You know, that's how we would be. Amen? You know? But now we just pray, you know, that God just keeps us. Amen? Keeps us and humbles us. Amen? You know, we don't argue. Oh, baby, we don't argue. We have intense We have fellowship. intense fellowship, but we don't argue. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen? So what's your excuse? And is Jesus in your house. Amen. Let's all pray. Gracious Father, we come before you tonight, Father God. We just give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise, Father God. Father God, without you, we are nothing. I know for myself, I'm nothing without you, Father God. I thank you every day when I wake up. And when I go to bed, I thank you, Lord God. And if I don't wake up, Father God, I just pray, Father God, by your grace that when I do open up my eyes, I'm there in heaven. But Father God, tonight, Father God, as your word went out, Father God, you know, there should be no excuse. And Jesus should be in everybody's home. But sometimes, it's our choice. And it is our choice, all the time. And if anybody's out there tonight, listening, and maybe you've served the Lord at one time, but... You know, he fell short. It's okay. We all fall short. The Bible says that a righteous man will fall seven times, but each time he'll get back up. And that's what counts, is that we get back up. We just don't say laying down, sitting down, or whatever the case may be. 
So if you're out there, or maybe you're listening and you know you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you know, say, you know what? It's time. It's time that I get things right. You know, and, and hey, you know, just just humble yourself. You know, especially as a man, especially as a man, our biggest downfall is pride. We don't want to be told. We don't want to be told what to do. We don't want to be told. You know anything and that's pride amen and the bible says that pride is the destruction of man so we need to humble ourselves amen just because you humble yourself beloved doesn't mean you're weak it doesn't believe me it doesn't it makes you stronger it makes you stronger so with that said just repeat this after me amen and he's not, you're not praying it to me. You're not, I'm not doing anything. I'm just a vessel of mercy. Amen. You know, you do it unto God. Amen. But do it with a sincere heart. Do it, you know, humbly with a sincere heart. And watch how God will move in your life. Amen. He could do it overnight. Or he could take, do it, do it, do it little by little. He knows, he knows what's just right for you. Amen. So just say, Lord Jesus. I come before you today. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my trespasses. You know everything about me. You know when I lay down and when I get up. You know when I go and when I come. Nothing's hidden from you. Take all those things that are not pleasing to you, Lord. And cast them as far as the east and from the west. And from this day forward, to the best of my ability, I will serve you. And if I fall... I know you'll be there to pick me up. And I will do my best, Lord, to read your word, to learn how to pray, and to find a good church, and to get rooted with other brothers and sisters. Amen? And if you said that tonight, just give God a chance. Just let him, just let, just know that if no one else loves you, Jesus loves you. Amen? So with that said, I just want to close in prayer. Amen. Uh, any prayer requests come in, Jackie? Mm -mm. Amen. But if, even if you didn't send a prayer request in, God knows your need. Amen. But we're going to close this in prayer. Don't forget, tomorrow morning prayer is at 8 to 9, a, uh, 9 a.m. Amen. One hour. Just come and join us in prayer for one hour. Then you got the rest of the day to go do what you got to do. Amen. And uh, Sunday morning, amen, church starts at 9 a.m. for praise and worship, amen. Come, join us, amen. If you're in the Bible Park area, you know, just Google Praise Chapel Bible Park and come join us. And if you belong to an, uh, another church, be faithful to your pastors. Be faithful to your pastors. Go, be service to the, unto the Lord, amen. Heavenly Father, as we close tonight, Father God, I just pray, Father God, that your will will be done in our lives, Father. Bless us, Father God. Guide us, Father God. But most of all, Father God, keep us in your hand so this world will not take us away. We just give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Give the Lord praise. Amen. Man, those, those lights are hot. Too bright. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. I was telling my wife's hot. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's how we do it. It's still going. What am I supposed to do? Sing? Good night. We'll Good see night. You. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Next week.